Welcome to Seth's Posse's first newscast of 2023. I'm Franny, and this is the leader of the Posse, Seth. And uh, now we're going to go on to our football segment. How about them Cowboys? What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another year at Seth's Posse. And today, I got the squad with us. Mine is Zoe. And as you guys remember, back in November, we had a little Thanksgiving football game that, unfortunately, we Seth's lost. Posse fell. We did lose. But we're not going to do that again. We're going first to score five touchdowns. Let's get into the highlights. Aha! First blitz. Go! Oh! <laughs> the ball. I'll play safe. Oh no. Oh no. Isaiah! Ready? Go! Yeah, baby! What about that read, buddy? Got him. Oh gosh. Yeah, baby! What? Right back. Okay. Hey, it was awesome, you know. I, re I really felt like you're right. Well, Carson once probably hasn't done that many touchdowns in one game before. Oh, you. Bring your dogs out. Bring your dogs. Get the next one. 21! Oh! Is that false start? Yeah. What? Oh. What has it? Nebraska! Omaha! Shit! No! No! Go! Three, one. Big chip. Come on, big chip. <laughs> that was fourth down. Hey, 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 you can't throw that. Let's fourth down. Yeah, you got two. Omaha. Say hey. <laughs> I'll get the deep ball. I'll get the deep ball. I got it. I got it. Oh! Oh! That's 
That's a legal forward passing, I saw. That was not backwards, that was a legal forward passing. Right out to the right. Come on, sit up. Watch the big show. Poor pass. This is fourth down. Isaiah. Okay. Omaha. Yep. That's a hold. We get another one. Man up, man up, man up. I'll get, I'll get a short cut over here. Go, go, go. I got Jared, I got Jared. 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 All right. Run it! The four. Hey! Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Three, three, go. Ah, what in doubt, go Kurt Warner. Seth's posse was uh, victorious in the, in the last uh, football game, and to some people, this may look like a shoe. But this is actually the uh, game MVP trophy. And now it's time to announce the game MVP. Mr. Kurt Warner, come on down. Game MVP. I'd also like to shout out to uh, Franny here, who videoed the whole game. Right. Anyway, uh, on to whoever's next. Today I'm here with uh, Mr. Dent, and I'm going to be interviewing for this month's uh, Teacher Spotlight. So, uh, Mr. Dent, what classes do you teach? Well, in terms of classes, I guess the, the more untraditional classroom that I teach in is the gym. Uh, I consider, you know, being a basketball coach very much a teacher. Um, so there's, there's that aspect. Um, only half the day um, am I in the classroom. Uh, first half of the day I'm in the office, assistant principal duties. Second half of the day, I spend in the lab with dual credit students, uh, foreign language students, and alternative credit students. So um, not really, um, I would say, a tremendous amount of teaching there. It's pretty much self-paced learning, but it's my job to make sure they have the curriculum available to them um, and get them what they need, um, sign them up for the right classes, um, and make sure they're making progress toward their educational goals. All right, and you brought up coaching. So how do you juggle your teaching with your coaching? Um, it's not really easy sometimes. Uh, we get snow days. That makes things a little bit easier. Um, but really, it's just a process that I kind of go through uh, to kind of keep myself uh, not too stressed out. I think it's uh, kind of evolved over the course of the last few years. Every year, I try to figure out what I did um, that I didn't like and what I need to change every year, just kind of make things work. So I guess it's just trying to find the extra minutes during the day when you get a chance to do stuff. 
Um, a lot of times when I'm in the lab, if I can get 10, 15 minutes when I'm not helping students, um, that's when I really like to try to focus in and maybe watch a little bit of film or watch it um, when I get home, uh, spend a little bit of time. And really, I think it's about setting a timer for yourself um, because you know, the teaching and the admin stuff during the day can really consume a lot of the day um, when you're trying to finish things, especially before the day gets over. Uh, so really, I try to find, you know, 10 or 15 minutes wherever I can to try to focus in on getting practice plans put together and watching film. Um, and also a lot of that I like to put on the guys themselves. You know, I uh, try to hold them responsible for watching film also, um, you know, try to become students of the game. So. All right. So uh, how many years have you been in the teaching and coaching industry? This is year five, um, being a teacher uh, and a coach um, for a school district in the state of Missouri. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Um, now we are going to move on to some I'm Isaiah here talking about Scholar Bowl. Our varsity Scholar Bowl team consists of Lucas James, Jacob Boiler, Trent Hardy, and Riley Queen. Lucas, Jacob, and Trent are seniors, and Riley Queen's the only junior. Our JV team consists of Sydney Smelter, John Rockleman, Zach Irvin, Izzy Brotherton, Quentin Roach, and Brandon Thompson. The coaches are Mr. John Reardon and Mr. Sean Parker. Our most recent Scholar Bowl match was versus Brookfield as the time of recording last night. Varsity won, JV sadly fell. Our next match is the 26th, home versus Monroe City. So on the 2nd of February, we go to Centralia, and then the 9th, we come back and play Highland. The, 20, the 16th, we play Macon, and the 23rd, we play home versus Palmyra. The 15th of March is at Canton, and Palmyra Invitational is February 4th. The conference tourney at South Shelby is March 4th, and then the district is to be announced. It's the 15th of April. Now on to Franny, who's talking about girls basketball. Thank you, Isaiah, for the rundown on Scholar Bowl. Currently, the girls basketball team is not looking too hot right now. The record of 2-13, to falling to Hannibal on January 26. And with that, their first February game is on February 3rd against Brookfield. On to Seth with FFA. Seth here giving the FFA update. So our state degrees, they go to screening next Wednesday. Then we have our proficiency awards that uh, go in February. Our contest teams start March the 3rd. And then we have our next meeting next Thursday on February the 2nd. Now off to Lucas. Thank you, Seth, for giving us a monthly update on FFA. And now I'm going to be talking about something that only happens once a year. Now coming off of Christmas and New Year's and all that stuff going on in December, there's not very many holidays to talk about in the month of January. Though there is one that is very important in the United States and that is known as Martin Luther King Jr. Day. It is a day commemorating the birthday and life of Dr. Martin Luther King. And you know, let's just give a quick rundown and I'm going to give you the history behind uh, kind of what happened with the whole day. So anyway, this story starts when Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was born in January of the year 1929 in the Deep South. Growing up in the South uh, in the 20s, 30s, 40s as a black man, he faced a lot of racial oppression due to the color of his skin. Uh, Dr. King obviously was not very happy with this, and he thought that they should be treated as equally as uh, white people were at the time. So he started uh, joining societies that were protesting against uh you know, uh, racists and everything. And it got to the point where he became such a prominent, prominent figure within uh, the civil rights movement, where he led the, he was the president of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference in the year 1963, which was a really big deal. And he continued to lead several nonviolent protests in the sixties, of course, uh, protesting civil rights. Dr. King is probably most known for one of the most famous speeches of all time is I had a dream speech. Here's a quick snippet of it right here. I have a dream. That my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. Let freedom ring, and when this happens, when we allow freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, 
we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. And that was only the first of many important speeches of his uh, that he did at the March in Washington in 1963. Unfortunately, Dr. King was assassinated in the year 1968 in Memphis, Tennessee, uh, by a white supremacist. And shortly after his death, many people started campaigning uh, for his birthday to be commemorated in the form of a holiday. And eventually that bill got to Congress in the early 80s, and it was passed by most states, and it became a federal law. Though, of course, not all states decided to ratify it just because Ronald Reagan signed it in the 80s. So it took a while. It was a process of many states just kind of writing in the bill, saying that this is going to be a national paid uh, day off for almost everybody who works. And the, one of the funniest things is, is most states passed it right off the bat. But there was something like Arizona, who Arizona didn't really want to pass the bill for whatever reason. So the NFL worked with uh, the federal government where they said, if you do not pass the bill by the end of 1999, we're going to move the Super Bowl that was supposed to take place in that year to a different location. Arizona didn't pass the bill and uh, the Super Bowl got moved that year. And eventually South Carolina, Arizona, New Hampshire all passed the bill together in about November of the year 2000. And that's where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day became a national holiday uh, all throughout the United States. The holiday is always celebrated on the third Monday of January. And now we're going to talk to uh, Drayson, who is getting interviewed about the boys of our city basketball team. Hey, I'm Drayson. I'm asking him a few questions about basketball. So as a senior, how do you become a role model and be a role model to the younger players? I feel like my role on the team is, you know, just keep it fun and show the younger guys that there's room for fun on top of uh, so serious all the time. So. So what are your thoughts on how the team is playing and what can you guys improve on to be a better team? I think we have a really good team this year, but it falls down to uh, efficiency and consistency. And yeah. we're not really good at either one of those right now, but we're going to come back towards the end here. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, so what are your plans after high school, like college? Is there basketball in the future? There is no basketball in my future, but there is uh, welding at John Wood Community College. And that's what I'm going to go for. All right. Thank you for your time, Jason. Yep. Thank you, Lucas, for informing the public on MLK Day. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Sus Posse's newscast. We'll see you in February. Cue the Batman music.